Do creatine supplements cause rhabdomyolysis? Hey gang, it's Joe Cannon again with another video for you. And this is gonna be the topic of today's video. Rhabdomyolysis perhaps caused by creatine supplementation. This is a topic that I have been seeing people talk about for some time. I've never officially done a video on it or even a review on it until now. Uh, this video will be part of a large review that is on my Supplement Clarity website. And I'm going to put a link to that in the description so you can check it all out here, but what I want to do here is go through what rhabdomyolysis is, tackle the cases that often pop up, give you my thoughts on those cases, and see if I can help you make sense of whether or not creatine caused rhabdo or not, and then sum it all up by giving you some uh, ideas on some things to watch out for if you're going to take creatine. So uh, what is rhabdomyolysis? Well, the, the basically it, it, it translates into muscle fiber death, skeletal muscle fiber death. Your biceps, your traps, your lats, latissimus dorsi, your glutes, they break down. And when they break down, when the muscle fibers essentially break down and die, they release their cellular contents into the blood. And some of this stuff can be very, very dangerous for us in high concentrations. For example, uh, common symptoms of rhabdomyolysis could be you could have a heart beating around Regularity. You can actually go into a heart attack from, from this phenomenon. Uh, you, are, uh, you can go into kidney failure and liver failure. Your arms and legs may swell up and doctors may actually need to slice open your arms and legs to relieve that pressure. Um, people have died from rhabdomyolysis. So I, I, I think it's definitely worthy of greater uh, educational uh, on the part of the, of the American public and the world's public as well. And that's why I like doing these, these videos uh, uh, to help people understand uh, something that very few people like to talk about. Now, um, you're, you're, for instance, you're looking at my book here. I'm, I say this with confidence and, and humility here, guys. Um, I am the number one expert in America on rhabdomyolysis. I say that because I've spent over a decade investigating uh, exercise and rhabdo, uh, and I, I speak to thousands of people on this topic, educating them on what to do, what not to do, et cetera. And I, want, I really want to say that and, and, and let you know that up, up, up front because I know there's a lot of websites that like to talk about rhabdo, and, and you have these people who like to think you make you think they're, they're an expert, guys, I am the expert. Uh, there's very few people in the world who know as much about this topic as I do. My day starts every morning uh, reviewing the rhabdo literature. That's how much, how much of a rhabdo nerd I am. And, it's been, and I've been doing that for a decade. So um, I, I just want to establish that so you know that uh, what you're going to get in this video is very different than what you're going to get maybe elsewhere. Uh, so what are some things that can cause rhabdo? Well, a variety of things actually, which makes this even much more fascinating for me. Uh, trauma. You can be in a car crash. You can fall off a ladder. Uh, you, you, you can get it. I, I saw something recently of, of a boxing match causing rhabdo, all the trauma from the punches. Uh, so there are a lot of things that can cause that. Um, medications. There are certain prescription and uh, medications that have been linked to a rhabdomyolysis. You've, for instance, probably heard about uh, that rare side effect that could accompany some cholesterol-lowering medications. Well, rhabdo, rhabdomyolysis, is that rare side effect that you often hear during TV commercials. They don't say the word rhabdo because it's a scary sounding word. Some dietary supplements have also been linked to this. Now we're going to talk about creatine, which is a rat, which is a, a dietary supplement, but there have been others as well. And I'll probably do a video on them at some time in the, in the future as well. Okay. Too much exercise. And that's really what I want to get at. Creatine is an exercise supplement. And we know that too much exercise can also cause rhabdomyolysis. And when it's exercise is the cause, it's called exertional rhabdomyolysis or exercise induced rhabdomyolysis. Okay. Now the thing that it, if you look at the research on, on exercise and rhabdo, the thing I just want to throw out to you real fast is what appears to be the cause of exercise is it's when you do a lot of stuff you're not used to doing. So if you've never done a certain exercise class before, or you've never done an exercise program before, or you, you never used a certain piece of equipment before, um, and you do enough of it, uh, it has the potential to, to unleash this, this phenomenon and allow, cause it to occur in the body. Um, and then, so when people take creatine, then there could be a synergistic effect is what people are sometimes talking about. So that's why some people will say creatine cause rhabdo. Um, I want to look at the reports on, on, on creatine causing rhabdo, uh, three of them. I'm going to throw out to you three reports that have linked creatine supplementation to rhabdomyolysis and give you my thoughts on them. Okay, so here we go. 
This was probably the very first case uh, where, where creatine was implicated. And it's basically, it, it, we are looking at it as a newspaper article from 1997, collegian wrestlers' deaths raise fears about training. Essentially, these were three individual college wrestlers who were taking creatine and unfortunately they died uh, from kidney failure. Um, when, when, when I looked at this, uh, the, these cases, they all were working out excessively. They were working out a lot. They were wearing rubber suits. Uh, they were sometimes refusing to drink liquids. They were going in steam rooms. Why? They were wrestlers. They were trying to lose weight for their wrestling matches. Well, they were taking creatine. And, and, and what is a common side effect of creatine supplements? It causes you to gain weight. I've actually met people who've told me they've gained 10 pounds of water weight with creatine. So unfortunately, these three individuals uh, were trying to lose weight while taking creatine and that excessive exercise they were doing, coupled with probably overheating uh, from, and being dehydrated, most likely contributed uh, to rhabdomyolysis occurring in them. Uh, and again, we look back in time, and you know, I'm sure I understand how some people may say, "Well, how did they know creatine, you know, wasn't putting weight on them?" We got to we got to realize that creatine first came on the U.S. market around 1992, 1993. Here we're looking at this from 1997. So it it, it took time for information about creatine to to disseminate uh, throughout the exercising population. And that also includes, I think, coaches uh, and, 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 and personal trainers as well. Uh, again, a lot of people may have not realized that creatine caused weight gain back then. And unfortunately, these, uh, the, these, the, these cases did arise and I feel horrible about it, but I wasn't, I, I'm not convinced that creatine was the direct cause of their kidney failure. Could it have played a role? Yeah, but I think it's most likely the uh, inordinate amount of exercise they were doing plus being overheated and dehydrated. Uh, another case, uh, this comes from a, uh, is a case report that came out in the year 2000, acute quadriceps compartment syndrome and rhabdomyolysis in a weightlifter using high dose creatine supplementation. Uh, compartment syndrome is a, uh, can be a factor of rhabdo. Essentially, compartment syndrome is excessive swelling of a bar part of the body. For instance, arms could swell up, legs could swell up. And this compartment syndrome, the swelling could actually be so great that people may not be able to extend or bend their limbs. I've talked to many people over the years who've had compartment syndrome and they've told me that they weren't able to dress themselves in the morning. They couldn't brush their teeth. Uh, they could not move their arms and legs. They were frozen. Um, in, in extreme cases, doctors will have to do surgery to relieve that pressure because uh, if it does get out of control, it, it literally will make muscle fiber death even worse. And in extreme cases, uh, amputation may actually be required. So uh, compartment syndrome is pretty serious, but let's look at this guy. He was a 24 year old guy um, who admitted that the day before he went to the ER, he was doing three hours of lower body exercise. He was doing three hours a leg day. Um, okay, that's interesting. Um, he had said that he had done similar types of exercise programs before, but what I couldn't find out from this is if he was doing the exact same type of exercise. Remember, rhabdomyolysis occurs when you do a lot of stuff you're not used to doing. So for instance, if this guy was doing three hours of leg days and he was doing, you know, say, I don't know, some certain type of leg press machine, and then he switched to the leg press sled, um, and he did it the equal amount of volume on the sled, um, it's possible that the, you know, a different exercise, even the same volume, weight times, rep times, sets, could have played a role in the development of rhabdo. Um, so again, we have to remember this unusual types of activities, which also contribute to this phenomenon occurring. And I couldn't make out from this report if he was doing the exact type of workout. But again, three hours is, is, is a lot of workout uh, time, especially for I any body part, even though legs are a very strong body part. I've met bodybuilders, real bodybuilders, who, have, who don't work out three hours a day with legs. So I just want to throw that out to you. Um, don't be doing something like that. Now, it does say he was an avid bodybuilder. It doesn't say if he was a pro bodybuilder or anything like that. But it does say that for the past year, he was using 25 grams of creatine per day. Um, okay, well, as you know, creatine is usually creatine supplementation is usually broken up into two different regimens. You have what's called the loading phase, which is what he was doing. Loading phase is 25 grams a day, and you usually do it for one week to load up on creatine. And then you taper off to about 
about two to three or four grams a day and that's it uh, to maintain your muscle creatine content. This guy was taking the loading phase for a year. That didn't make any sense to me. I don't, I don't, I don't get why he was doing that, but I'm, I'm going to let that go. Um, could creatine had played a role uh, in, in, in his elevated creatinine levels because creatinine is a, is a marker of kidney damage. It goes up when you take creatine. Uh, it's possible, but I think it's more likely in this case, the guy was doing three hours of exercise and he was doing stuff that he probably wasn't used to. Could creatine have played a role? It's possible. We don't know from this report. Then we come to another unfortunate incident. This was a college football player um, who died after uh, an exercise program in college, and he was also taking uh, some supplements that contained creatine, and uh, his family had sued the, uh, the uh, coach as well as the college. I'm unaware of how this, uh, this, 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 this lawsuit actually settled, but uh, I'll just throw out to you some things that jumped out at me when I read uh, this report. He was was uh, all the people in the in the uh, weightlift in the uh, football team was doing a uh, weightlifting program and after they were all done that they were they went out into the field and they did 16 100 yard sprints now what i couldn't determine was whether or not these exercise programs were again unusual they were used were they used to doing or not used to doing them did they just come in from the off season and all of a sudden start working out um, I, I i'm not sure i, I couldn't make this out or whether they were used to the exercise or not. I will also say that another uh, aspect to this was that this particular player um, had the sickle cell anemia trait. The sickle cell anemia trait is a genetic uh, marker. Uh, it is essentially, you have one gene for sickle cell anemia. You never get sickle cell anemia, but having one gene for it does increase your risk for rhabdomyolysis. Um, back then, the colleges were not testing for the sickle cell anemia trait. They are now. Um, I believe all colleges test for sickle cell anemia. Hey, if there are any uh, college coaches or high school coaches um, watching this video, please let me know uh, because I'm, I'm not so sure, but I'm under the impression that all colleges do test for sickle cell trait as well as some other things as well. Um, again, very sad case. My guess is he was probably uh, doing a lot of stuff he was not used to doing, 16 100 yard sprints immediately after doing probably some intense weightlifting. And you combine that with the fact that he's got the sickle cell anemia trait. And again, he's taking creatine. Again, may have been a perfect storm, but how much of of that creatine played a role, we do not know. So all these cases involve excessive exercise, perhaps excessive exercise that was unusual to the individuals, more unusual being unusual exercises, or they've done the exercise for a longer period of time than they had done before. Again, that can also trigger rhabdomyolysis. Again, could creatine have played a role? It is possible, but there does not appear to be any direct proof of it. Creatine is actually one of the most, if not the most highly researched dietary supplement on earth. And I've read a lot of the studies of this over the years, uh, too many to count by the way, and I have never found a, a creatine study that noted rhabdomyolysis as a side effect. In fact, when they do look at creatine and kidney functioning in these research studies, they do find that most cases there's no significant abnormality in kidney functioning. So again, studies are not always the same thing as real life. So again, we, we can't totally exonerate creatine, but I uh, I don't necessarily believe in, in these cases that creatine played a direct role in the development of rhabdomyolysis. Now, that said, I have some uh, things to think about if you're considering taking creatine. And I'll throw out just 11 here. There's uh, probably more, but these are some of the things that just jumped off the top of my head. Number one, if you've ever had rhabdomyolysis before, um, don't take creatine supplements. Again, I, I, there's no, there's really no research on rhabdo and creatine directly. So I can't say one way or another whether it's going to uh, cause it or not. But it, what I will say is if you've ever had rhabdo, you've got a greater chance of having it again. There does appear to be a genetic aspect to rhabdo that few people are talking about. Um, so there are, there are people who've had it multiple times. I know someone who's had it multiple times personally. Uh, so again, just I would not take creatine if you've ever had rhabdomyolysis. Uh, if you have the sickle cell anemia trait or sickle cell anemia, don't take creatine. And also when you do start an exercise program, begin very slowly. Do not increase the weight rep sets or time you exercise too quickly as this could trigger rhabdo. 
Same thing's true if you take cholesterol-lowering statin medications. As I said at the beginning of this video, um, they are linked in some cases to not only muscle pain, but also uh, rhabdomyolysis. And the same thing also goes for those injectable cholesterol-lowering drugs. They're called PCSK9 inhibitors. Uh, one of them is called Repatha. You may have seen some of these things advertised on TV. Um, it's possible they could increase the risk of rhabdo as well. We do know that they can cause, in some people, significant muscle pain. McCardle disease or McCardle syndrome is a, is a genetic abnormality where people have trouble breaking down glycogen. And glycogen is an energy source we use during exercise, and it has also been linked uh, to rhabdo. Okay? And same thing is true with a carnitine deficiency and, and Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, as well as phosphofructokinase deficiency, PFK. Phosphofructokinase is an enzyme that helps us make energy, ATP, um, and it is is also linked uh, to rhabdo. Um, I, I don't see any, if you're healthy, uh, studies showing that you, it, creatine causes kidney or liver problems, but if you got kidney or liver problems, do not take creatine supplements. And the same thing goes for if you have heart disease or high blood pressure, um, I would not chance it. Again, creatine causes the storage of water in the body. Could this, for instance, elevate blood pressure? It's possible, although the research says no, but one thing I noticed with the research is most of it involves people with normal blood pressure. I have yet to see any big studies involving hypertensive individuals taking creatine. So again, I wouldn't chance it myself. And then lastly, guys, um, I get asked a lot by people, do I need a creatine supplement? And the answer for 99% of those people is no, you do not need a creatine supplement. So I'll just say this, if, you're, if you've been working out consistently and you're doing it hard and you're working out with heavy weights, like something you only lift like four times, something like that, we might talk creatine. But if you're just going to the gym and you're going to the gym maybe three days a week or so for an hour a day and you're you're knocking out like 10, 12, 15 reps, you know, on the bench press or the leg press, you don't need no creatine supplement. Most people who asked about it do not need it. So um, again, this is, a, this, is a, this is a supplement that actually is very highly researched. It will work in high performance athletes. I'm just not convinced that the average person watching this video needs a creatine supplement. So guys, that's all I got for you. I really hope this helps clear up your misconceptions about rhabdomyolysis and creatine. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. I will endeavor to answer them myself. Until later, guys, I am Joe Cannon. Have yourself a fantastic day.